In this video, we will learn all about cones. A cone is a three-dimensional solid that is sort of like a pyramid, except it has a circular base as opposed to a polygon base. So this is what a cone looks like. And it's what you might think of as a cone if you've seen an ice cream cone or any other cone. It has a circular base. And it also has a lateral surface right here which is this curved surface that helps to make the rest of the cone. The length right here is called the slant height, just like it is in a pyramid, and that will be helpful to us. Other dimensions that we'll need to know is the actual height, which is right here, which is the distance from the apex to the center of the circle, and it's perpendicular to the circle. And finally, we'll want to know the radius of the circle. Now, the two measurements that we'll want to know about cones are how do we figure out surface area and how do we figure out volume. So let's talk about volume first. Now, since a cone is basically just like a pyramid, except it happens to have a circular base, we can use the same idea for volume of cones as we did for pyramids. So the volume of a pyramid is the area of the base times the overall height divided by three. So in this case, the area of our base, since the base is just a circle and the area of the circle is pi r squared, the area of our base is just pi r squared. Then we'll multiply that by the overall height, which is this height right here, and divide by three. So the volume for any cone is pi r squared times h divided by three. Now surface area is slightly trickier. There's two faces or sort of surfaces that make up the cone. There's the circle, that's the base, and then there's this lateral surface. So since surface area is the area of all the faces added up, that means that the surface area of the cone will be the area of the circle, pi r squared, plus the area of this lateral surface. But we don't really know what that lateral surface is. So let's take look at the net of a cone in order to visualize what the lateral surface is. So this is what the net looks like. We can clearly see the circle, which has a radius of r, and then the lateral surface is actually a sector of a larger circle, or a different circle. It wouldn't necessarily be larger, it just is in this case. Now, the radius of this larger circle is actually the slant height of the original cone, which we usually will notate with the letter l. So this radius is l. Now we don't necessarily know this angle right here, but what we do know is that the arc length for the sector must have been the circumference of the original circle. So in each case, that is 2 pi r. Because the circumference of this whole circle, if it had all been there, would have been 2 pi l, what that means is that the fraction of the circle we're looking at is 2 pi r over 2 pi l. So that's the fraction of the circle that we're working with, which reduces to just r over l. Now, the area, we're trying to figure out what the area of this sector is. So since we know that this sector is r over l, that fraction of the whole circle, we can multiply that by what would be the area of this full circle in order to figure out the area of this sector. So we'll multiply this by pi l squared because that's the area of the full circle. And when we reduce this, the L's partially cancel out and we get pi R L. So that means that the area of this sector is pi R L, okay? So going back up to the overall surface area, 
we had pi r squared for the circle plus pi r l for the area of the lateral surface. So you just need to remember this, the formula for surface area, and hopefully you have some sense for where it came from, which we talked about here. But it's okay if that was a little bit confusing to you if you understand how to use it. And remember that L is the slant height, which is this height right here. And in volume, when we're talking about H height, that's the perpendicular height right here.